what do you mean by a chemical bond look here one or more electrons attracted by more than one nucleus try to understand this definition one or more electrons attracted by more than one nucleus what is the essential difference between an atom and a molecule atom and a molecule in an atom you have only one nucleus one nucleus attracting one electron electrons are under the influence of one nucleus only in a molecule the electrons are under the influence of more than one nucleus in a hydrogen molecule h2 you have two nuclei and two electrons both the electrons are attracted by both the nuclei whereas in an atom there is only one positive one nucleus you will see more than one positive therefore now you say these two hydrogens are bonded or you can look at the, that way also electron is holding the nuclei this electron is attracting both the nuclei so this electron is bringing the nuclei together how do two positive charges come close this is positive this is positive how can they come close they don't come close a negative charge will bring them together they are brought together by a negative charge so one or more electrons attracted by more than one nucleus is bonding and what are the important things in uh, the examination point of view especially in competitive exams we will be facing some questions like this number of pi bonds in so3 how can you find for which you need to know the structure and for that purpose first things first what we will do is how to draw any structure let us learn how to draw any structure at least this covers most of the structures hydrogen h f c l b r i o minus they always form one bond i will explain myself later they always form one bond means when they are terminal atoms for example in pcl5 chlorine is said to be the terminal atom phosphorus is the central atom phosphorus is at the center and five chlorines are approaching these are called terminal atoms so when hydrogen is a terminal atom or any one of these is a terminal atom what they do is they form one bond only and oxygen forms wherever it is as a, a terminal atom two bonds and any plus in a group the role of any plus in a group is to accept a pair of electrons a lone pair of electrons plus if you have a positive species it accepts a pair of electrons and any other minus any other minus other than o minus we have already mentioned what o minus is capable of o minus can form one bond any other minus other than o minus donates a pair of electrons donates a pair of electrons now let us apply this the simplest possible way so3 how to draw the structure of so3 and through that through which only you know how many pi bonds are there sulfur is the central atom how do we know which is a central atom whichever is one is central atom obviously there is only one sulfur that is center and a host it's like a host and three oxygens what is the role of oxygen we already discussed oxygen forms two bonds two bonds 
over. Now we have got three sigma and three pi bonds. SO3, one sulfur, three oxygens, each of them forming two bonds, SO3. Now, let us PO4, 3 minus. Phosphorus is the central atom here. P, O4, 1, 2, 3, 4, P, O4, 4 oxygens, but 3 of them are minuses, it, the formula itself suggests 3 minus, so minus, 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 O minus, so out of the 4 oxygens, only one is an oxygen atom, the other 3 are O minus ions, and what is the role of oxygen? You see, oxygen forms two bonds. I am just translating what I have written there. O minus forms one bond. One, one. Over that is the structure of PO4, three minus. Anyone can draw by just applying simple procedure. Now, SO4, two minus. How will you draw one sulfur? Four oxygens. Two of them are minus. Out of the four oxygens, two are minuses. Oxygen forms, what is the role of oxygen? Two bonds. Two. O minus one. So, do not worry whether sulfur can form six bonds or not. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do not worry about it yet. It is too early. Now, B of four minus. B F four minus. Now, one boron, four fluorines. It is all there in the formula. I am not using anything from outside. Whatever is given in the formula, I am just spelling it out. I am just spelling it out. One boron, four fluorine. One of them is a minus. Fluorine forms one bond. F minus. What is the role of minus in a group? Whenever there is a minus, a minus donates a pair of electrons to the central atom. Minus. And this is called a coordinate covalent bond. Whenever somebody is donating a pair of electrons, so B of 4 minus. Next, NH4 plus. NH4 plus. 1 nitrogen, 4 hydrogens. One of them is a plus. What is the role of hydrogen? Hydrogen forms one bond. What is the role of plus in a group? What is the role of plus in a group? A plus accepts a pair of electrons. Plus is accepting a pair. Okay. Now, this is the first principle. What is the first principle? H, F, C, L, B, R, I, O minus, they form one bond. Oxygen forms two bonds. Plus accepts a pair of electrons. Next, two. More than one central atom. Suppose there are more than one central atoms, then distribute all other atoms equally. Distribute equally. More than one central atom, distribute equally. Cr2 O7 2 minus. Cr2 O7 2 minus. You have two chromiums, seven oxygens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. CR2O7, two, two minus. Look here, I will write it again. So, more than one central atom distribute equally. CR2O7, two minus. So, now you have two chromiums and of course, seven oxygens. 2 chromiums, 7 oxygens, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The seventh one is also equally distributed. Whatever is there that has to be equally distributed. And 2 minus, 2 of the oxygens are negatives, distribute them also equally. Now, what is the role of oxygen? Forms 2 bonds. 2. O minus forms 1 bond. 2, 1 each, that is all, CR2O7, 2. 
So, more than one central atom distribute equally, that is the second instruction. Third, for nitrogen, suppose you have more than three months. You need to have one dative bond. For nitrogen, more than three bonds, one of the bonds should be a dative bond. I tell you what. NO3 minus one nitrogen, three oxygens, one of them is a minus. NO3 minus one nitrogen. 3 oxygens, one of them is a minus. Oxygen forms 2 bonds, O minus forms 1 bond. And therefore, what is the role of nitrogen? The quota of 3, three bonds are over. The quota of 3 bonds are over. Therefore, this must be a dative bond, coordinate covalent bond, like this. Fourth instruction being try to avoid lone pairs as far as possible from a structure. Try to avoid lone pairs as far as possible. You know why? The lone pairs repel the bond pairs and cause strain to the geometry. Five. For oxy acids, for oxy acid, what are oxy acids? Acids which have both oxygen and hydrogen. Acid that has both oxygen and hydrogen. H2SO4 is an oxy acid. H3PO4 is an oxy acid. For oxy acids, number of OH groups, number of OH groups is equal to number of hydrogens present there in some matter. Of course, we have nearly 60, 70 oxy acids and in the case of just three of the acids, they are an exception. H3PO3, H3PO2 and H3BO3. Of course, H3BO3, they are, there are three OH groups. You have two OH groups only here, one only here, three. Three hydrogens are there, three OHs are there, but that is an exception for some other reason. Now, H2SO4, how will you draw the structure? H2SO4, one sulfur, sulfur the central atom and two hydrogens, number of OH groups is equal to number of hydrogens present. Since you have two hydrogens, you draw two OH. What else you are left with? Two oxygens. Two oxygens, they form two bonds each, H2SO4. That's all. As simple as that. Now, H4P2O7. H4P2O7. What is that you should notice? There are two phosphorus atoms. Two central atoms are there. Two phosphorus, two central atoms. How many OH groups are there? The number of OH groups is equal to number of hydrogens present. Four hydrogens, four OH. One, two. Distribute equally. Three, four. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 3 more oxygens, 1, 2, 3. What is the role of oxygen? Forms 2 bonds, 2 bonds, 1, 1. That's all. For oxy acids, number of OH groups is equal to number of hydrogens present. Now, why is H3PO3 an exception to that rule? That is in fact not an exception and that is a part of a huge generalization. Let us see what that is. H3PO3, 1 phosphorus, 3 OH groups is what you and I would like to write. This is how we would have liked to write POH thrice. This is how we wish it is. It is. Okay. But the structure of H3PO3 is not this because after forming 3 bonds, phosphorus is left with a lone pair, a pair of electrons unused. And to avoid that lone pair, we had an instruction earlier, uh, avoid the lone pairs as far as possible. Therefore, 
a little change in the structure p double bond o oh oh and h this is it so one of the hydrogens is directly bonded to phosphorus so that phosphorus can have a tetrahedral geometry and it can get rid of its lone pair now h3po3 h2s2o7 how will you draw the structure two sulfurs two central atoms recollect the rule more than one central atom distribute equally since you have two sulfurs two oh groups two oh and you have a total of seven oxygens and five more oxygens are left distribute equally 1 2 3 4 five What is the role of oxygen? Forms two bonds, and O once again acting as a bridge. H two S two. So that's all about how to draw any structure. Using this, we can almost write all all uh, our level structures, if not complex structures. This this could be drawn. Next, how to find hybridization? and in that structures part you must have got a doubt sir we have seen a few elements like hydrogen fluorine chlorine bromine iodine and just oxygen and o minus we how 1 2 3 4 5 6 with just six or seven elements how can you say any structure there are 80 150 elements the reason is most most of them are metals Out of the 115, 80 odd are metals, and they don't generally form covalent bonds. I mean, metals mostly form ionic bonds; they don't form covalent bonds. Therefore, structure is there only for a covalent bond, and in a covalent bond, only non-metals participate. Noble gases, in any case, don't participate in bonding. So, what are the other non-metals we have? Sulfur, phosphorus, carbon, silicon, and carbon, sulfur. They are in most cases. they are the central atoms rather than terminal atoms carbon will never be a terminal atom you never see, you will never see a compound called clc3 where carbon is a terminal atom okay therefore the rarest exception being sulfur carbon disulfide it is of course similar to carbon dioxide okay co2 cs2 all in the same so Though we have learned a few elements, one, two, three, hardly five, six elements, we are we are saying that uh, we can draw any structure using this knowledge. Okay, there may be one or two cases you may not be able to apply, but that you know you should not be worried about that because ninety-nine uh, percent of the structures is made possible. One or two, okay, complex structures you may not be suppose you may not be able to draw B four O seven. Two minus that Na to B four O seven borax Na. You may not be able to draw the structure using that principle, B four O seven two minus. We have to you have to learn one or those two separately. Most most things you learn in a general way, and if there are any one or two things out of the ordinary, you learn them separately. That should not be a big problem. How to find hybridization? Most cases. H is equal to V plus M minus C plus A by two. Don't worry about the hugeness of this formula. It's no big formula. Its application is quite simple. V is equal to number of valence electrons of the central atom. Most cases that is group number. Number of valence electrons of the central atom. in most cases it is group number except in the case of xenon because xenon happens to be in the zero group but the valence electrons are eight so for this purpose we say xenon belongs to eighth group as far as this question is concerned m is number of monovalent atoms number of monovalent atoms that is 
you should not consider monovalent terminal atoms you should not consider species like oxygen forget oxygens just forget oxygens ignore oxygens so3 the three oxygens are not counted at all then c is cationic charge charge of a cation means suppose there is some positive charge as a positively charged ion you subtract the charge a anionic charge anionic charge this is some kind of a shortcut no doubt i agree but we need a procedure and this helps in finding almost 99.99% of the hybridizations uh, after after doing all this h is equal to 2 you will get sp 3 sp 2 like that so on so forth 4 sp 3 5 sp 3 d sp 3 d 2 sp 3 d 3 as the case may be okay you can proceed to answer that now apply this for start with nh3 nh3 what is hybridization of nitrogen in ammonia the question will be the hybridization of nitrogen in ammonia is how will you find that valence electrons nitrogen belongs to the fifth group that's why i said group number is extremely important 5 plus monovalent atoms three hydrogens hydrogen is monovalent means which forms one bond this m has not much of a meaning this m suggests you don't consider oxygens consider all others three hydrogens you have to consider them 5 plus 3 minus 2 5 plus 3 by 2 it is equal to 4 the hybridization is sp3 so the hybridization of nitrogen in ammonia is sp3 what i mean to tell you here is though the formula appears to be very big its application is very simple 5 plus 3 by 2 what about the c and a when the question is about cation this is c comes into picture when the question is about an anion ammonia is neither neither anion nor cation it is not charged nh3 next so3 so3 sulfur belongs to sixth group 6 plus 0 by 2 Six plus zero. Why zero? Oxygens are not considered. Six plus zero by two, three sp two. Like this, you can apply this formula any number of cases. Then NH four plus NH four plus nitrogen number of valence electrons five five plus four minus one by two valence electrons five. Plus four minus one by two. Five plus four minus one by two. How much will that be? Okay. Sp three once again. Now. So four two minus valence electrons of sulfur six. Oxygens forget. Ignore oxygens. Therefore six plus zero plus two by two. Six plus zero plus two by two. So after all, send it in six plus two by two, eight by two, four. Sp three. Now. PCl five. Phosphorus. You should know that phosphorus belongs to fifth group. The group number is extremely important. Five plus five by two. Five plus five by two. Five. Sp three d. so one big hurdle how to find hybridization of any molecule so you can apply this in any number of examples so cl2 the hybridization of sulfur how to find that central atom is sulfur 6 oxygen 0 6 plus 0 plus 2 by 2 6 plus oxygens are not considered since you have two chlorines you take 6 plus 2 by 2 sp3 once again XeO2F2, eight plus zero plus two by two. What is this? Eight plus zero plus two by two. Xenon has eight valence electrons. Oxygen, oxygens are not considered. So eight plus zero plus two by two. 
10 by 2 which happens to be 5 sp3d 8 plus 0 plus 2 by 2 so how to find hybridization so what is that we have done so far how to draw any structure how to find hybridization and for carbon only this is for carbon only for carbon only no pi bond suppose you don't have a pi bond since we have we have to find the hybridization of large number of carbons in organic chemistry we need to have a special procedure for carbon no pi bond the hybridization is sp3 one pi bond the hybridization is sp2 two pi bonds the hybridization is sp what does it tell you pi bonds are eating into pure orbitals pi bonds are consuming pure orbitals they they don't want hybrid orbitals so carbon is forming one pi bond means it has got four orbitals and you have to leave one orbital one uh, one p so the other uh, that p using that p a pi bond is formed no pi bond sp3 Now, let us try to find out the hybridization of each of the following. What about this carbon? It has got one pi bond sp2. What about this carbon? This carbon has two pi bonds on either side sp. One pi bond sp2. One pi bond sp2. One pi bond sp2. Two pi bonds sp2. Two pi bonds sp. That's all. Two pi bonds. So whenever carbon is for not forming a pi bond, it is sp3. Next, valency is of two types. Valency, two varieties. One is electrovalency. Covalency. Electrovalency. Covalency. What is electrovalency? The number of electrons lost or gained by an atom. The number of electrons lost or gained by an atom, of course, in an ionic bond. Number of electrons lost or gained in an ionic bond. Now, Covalency is the number of electrons shared, number of electrons shared by an atom. Number of electrons shared. So, this electrovalency will be obvious in compounds. MgO magnesium is losing two electrons, oxygen is gaining two electrons. Mg2 plus O minus. But this covalency is somewhat hidden. We have to find this out. So covalency is equal to number of bonds formed. Including dative bonds including dative, dative means coordinate covalent, dative bonds. So, the covalency should include the number of dative bonds also. So, how to find the maximum covalency, maximum covalency. What is the maximum covalency of nitrogen? What is the maximum covalency of phosphorus? Whenever such a question arises, how to find that? First of all, unpaired electrons, unpaired electrons. Suppose there are unpaired electrons in the electronic configuration. When you write the electronic configuration, if you come across unpaired electrons, 
unpaired electrons are used in sharing and covalent bonds are formed covalent bonds are formed unpaired electrons are used in sharing covalent bonds are formed two paired electrons Suppose you have paired electrons. What will you do with a pair of electrons? They are excited if possible. If possible in the sense, if there are vacant orbitals. Excited if possible. And more covalent bonds are formed. more covalent bonds are formed. If not, suppose it is not possible to excite the electrons. Suppose it is not possible to excite the electrons because of the non-availability of any vacant orbitals, they are donated as such, donated to form dative bond. Remember the warning, only one pair is donated. only one pair is donated. Vacant orbitals. Suppose you have vacant orbitals, vacant orbitals are used in accepting, accepting pairs of electrons, accepting pairs of electrons and Dative bonds are formed. You accept until you get a maximum of six bonds. Until you accept pairs until you get a covalency of six. Let us apply these rules. So, unpaired electrons are used in sharing, covalent bonds are formed, paired electrons are excited if possible, if not, they are donated as it is, the pair is donated and vacant orbitals are used in accepting pairs and more dative bonds are formed. Now, let us apply this with beryllium, beryllium. Two S one, two P X one, two P Y zero, two P Z zero. The original configuration of beryllium is one S two, two S two, and its ground state it is two S two. In its excited state itself, it is two S one, two P X one, two P Y zero, two P Z zero. Look here. Beryllium has just two electrons in its outermost shell. What we believe about beryllium is it better bond, it better forms uh, ionic bonds, loses the two electrons to somebody, becomes beryllium 2 plus ion and we prefer beryllium to form ionic bonds. It is not our preference that is important. What beryllium does is important. Look here. Why does not beryllium generally form ionic bonds? Since it has only two uh, electrons after it loses beryllium 2 plus, what happens, once it loses 2 electrons, it has 4 protons versus 4 electrons, look here, 4 protons versus 4 electrons. So, if it loses just 2 electrons, it becomes 4 protons versus 2 electrons, means too much of positive charge and there is an imbalance of positive and negative charges. Therefore, beryllium does not prefer to form ionic bonds. And our textbooks say when beryllium forms beryllium 2 plus, it is it becomes a very small ion and small ions are more covalent. Okay. So, when beryllium ion is formed, it develops covalent character. It does not mean that it forms beryllium ions and then it develops covalent character. To start with, it is covalent. It has a covalent tendency. When you read the statement from books, what you misunderstand is, Beryllium forms Be2 plus ions and then 
since uh, beryllium 2 plus is very small because of huge positive charge 4 units of positive charge and 2 units of negative charge Be2 plus is very small and small cations are being more covalent it may they may make you believe that first beryllium 2 plus is formed and then covalency is created it is not the case beryllium straight away does not prefer to form ionic bonds because losing two electrons is very difficult for it now so what does beryllium do it has got two electrons only in the valence shell by sharing two more it gets four only it does not get the octet but there is no alternative if you get an octet rule what is that octet rule you get eight electrons in your outermost shell it is okay octet rule is okay but if it is not possible to get an octet what is that one can do I want an octet. If I do not get an octet, I will be satisfied with whatever I get. So, beryllium also has two electrons in the outermost shell, valence shell only two, and that two after excitation, it, the pair becomes unpaired. Originally, it is a pair of electrons, and only after excitation, after giving energy, after breaking the pair, it becomes unpaired. Now, it has so apply this unpaired electrons are used in sharing. Unpaired electrons are used in sharing. So, beryllium forms two bonds by sharing. And uh, what else it can do? Beryllium forms two bonds. Example, BeCl2. Okay. BeCl2. Beryllium forms two bonds. BeCl2. And uh, what else it can do? It has got vacant orbitals. So, if someone donates a pair of electrons, it becomes ready to accept. And it becomes four. So, it will accept two more pairs B E F 4 2 minus 2 pairs. It has accepted two pairs. So, now what happens? See, beryllium originally has two electrons. Sharing two electrons, it has got four and is accepting two pairs. So, this is the electron of beryllium. This is the electron of beryllium. This is the electron of fluorine. This is the electron of fluorine. These are the pairs of F minus. F, F, F minus, F minus. So, who is in contact with beryllium? Two fluorines which are sharing two electrons, two fluorines which are sharing two electrons and two F minus which are donating two pairs. So, that, that is that's how beryllium got octet indirectly. So, beryllium to start with forms beryllium fluoride F minus F minus Be of 4 2 minus. So, beryllium accept by. So, what is the maximum covalency of beryllium? Means whether by sharing or accepting, donating, the maximum covalency happened to be 4. So, let us look at the maximum covalency of boron. Boron 2 has 3 electrons only in its outermost shell, 2, 3. Atomic number is 5 number of valence electrons 3. So, 2 s 1, 2 p x 1, 2 p y 1, 2 p z 0. What is that boron can do? It has 3 unpaired electrons and I told you unpaired electrons are used in sharing. So, boron can share 3 electrons and it has a vacant orbital, it can accept a pair of electrons. Therefore, the maximum covalency of boron is 4. Examples being boron trifluoride and BF4 minus. What is boron doing in BF4 minus? 3 fluorines, 1 bond each and F minus donates. So, the maximum covalency is 4. So, look at it at a final time. Unpaired electrons are used in sharing and covalent bonds are formed. Paired electrons are excited if possible. So, we have applied unpaired electrons to start with. Let us look at the second one. Nitrogen 2s2, 2px1, 2py1, 2pz1. It is important for you to write uh, electronic configuration using the Hund's rule means you should not write it as a 2p3. 2p3 does not tell you anything. 2px1, 2py1, 2pz1 because now it is clear 
uh, that nitrogen has three unpaired electrons and these three unpaired electrons are used in sharing. So, nitrogen forms three bonds as in the case of ammonia. Now, what else nitrogen can do? So, we should account for all the valence electrons, what they are doing. Now, it has two more electrons, but this is being a pair of electrons. This pair can be used only when this is excited, but when the 2s electrons are excited, there is no orbital here, there is no vacant orbital here. We expect, uh, uh, we do not expect a 2d here. Okay. Therefore, the pair cannot be excited. So, here excitation is not possible. So, what will you do if excitation is not possible? You donate them. So, nitrogen donates that pair of electrons and forms the fourth bond. Look here. NH4 plus. NH4 plus. Nitrogen, one nitrogen, four hydrogens. One of them is a plus. That is what we learnt in structures. And hydrogen forms one bond. And nitrogen still has a pair of electrons it donates. By donating the pair, the shape of nitrogen goes from pyramidal to tetrahedral. That way, the bond angle has increased slightly, 107 to 109.5 degrees. So, the atoms are relatively less strained now. The bonds are less strained now. NH4 plus. That is the reason nitrogen donates that lone pair. So, why are lone pairs donated? The lone pairs are present in a structure, they cause some repulsion. Now, the maximum covalency of nitrogen then is 4 NH4 plus. Look at oxygen 2S2, 2PX2, 2PY1, 2PZ1. This is the condition of oxygen. What is it oxygen can do in this state? Oxygen has two unpaired electrons, they both are used in sharing and there is a pair of electrons which, which can be donated. There are two pairs, but I have already warned you, even though you have two pairs, you can donate only one pair, I tell you why. So, the maximum covalency of oxygen is three. You do not see any substance where you have more than three bonds formed by oxygen. H2O. H2O, where oxygen has two lone pairs, the pairs remain pairs and the unpaired electrons which are shared with hydrogen, they are already shared with hydrogen. Two pairs and two unpaired electrons which are shared with hydrogen. So, you count the octet, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 into 8 electrons. Now, what is this water molecule can do? It will donate one lone pair, HOH. H plus. So, there is another lone pair, but that cannot be donated because after oxygen donates, oxygen gets a formal positive charge. Formal positive charge means we treat oxygen uh, as a plus now. Since it has donated two electrons, it is as good as losing one. Donating two electrons means sharing two electrons means you are is like losing one electron and oxygen gets a formal positive charge. The positive one falls on this oxygen now. So, now it cannot donate any further. So, the maximum covalency of oxygen is 3. And look at phosphorus 3s2, 3px1, 3py1, 3pz1. Similar to nitrogen, the only difference being 3s instead of 2s. Nitrogen belongs to second period and you know the elements of second period 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p. Elements of second period lithium to fluorine, they have only s and p sub levels and they have only 4 orbitals, 1s orbital and 3p orbitals. So, they have only 4 orbitals, so their maximum covalency can be 4 only. After all said and done, what is required for bond formation? 
space around the nucleus. If there is space around the nucleus, your electrons uh, can travel uh, along with others electrons or both your electrons will be going to another nucleus or someone else pair of electrons may be approaching you. So, what is required is there should be some space for the incoming electrons be it yours or be it uh, others. Now, so second period elements at best can form four bonds, but what about this phosphorus 3 s 2 this is the ground state, ground state electronic configuration. Now, what can phosphorus do in its ground state? You see three unpaired electrons forms three bonds and there is a pair which can be donated. So, three, four, three, four. Max in ground state phosphorus can form three bonds as well as four bonds, but how, how is the fourth bond formed? Fourth bond is not a normal bond, it is formed only through donation. So, pH 3, pH 4 plus, pH 3, pH 4 plus just like NH 3, NH 4 plus this, this is no new thing, this is only imitating nitrogen NH 3, NH 4 plus ground state. And what else can phosphorus do? Phosphorus in its excited state, when phosphorus is in its excited state, excited state, look here 3 s 1, 3 p x 1, 3 p y 1, 3 p z 1, 3 d 1. Where has this come from? This 3 s electron when some energy is given it goes to the 3 d state. So, what is required for bond formation? Unpaired electrons, paired electrons, vacant orbitals. If pure vacant orbitals are there, you can invite others electrons. If you have a pair of electrons, you can give them to others, you can donate them to others. So, there are so many ways of bond formation, it is not necessarily losing or gaining as in the case of ionic bond. You can share, you can donate, you can accept. So, considering all these things, the maximum covalency. So, 3 s 2, 3 p x 1, 3 p y 3 p z 1, we in fact have so many zeros, 3 d 0, 3 d 0, 3 d 0, so many zeros, 5 zeros, 3 d 0, 5 vacant d orbitals are there. So, one of these orbitals is used for excitation, when some energy is given, it go, goes there like that. So, it is possible for all atoms to form bonds, even helium also can form bonds for that matter. Helium 1s2, 1s2. How can it form bonds? Sir, it is a noble gas, it is an inert gas, it does not participate in bond formation. Why? The reason for all such things in chemistry is this. Look here. For helium to form bonds, the electrons have to be separated. It is a pair of electrons, only when it is separated they can form bonds. For which what is required? 1s1. 2s1. Okay, when you give energy, the pair will get separated, no doubt 1s will go to 2s. This will definitely take place, there is no question about it. When energy is given, who can stop this? The pair of electrons is broken. Now, you have got two unpaired electrons and now a bond is formed. So, helium also can form helium chloride. Helium can form helium chloride, that may sound surprising to you. It can form helium chloride, but it does not form because Look at the logic. For this excitation, energy is required. That is, you have to spend 100 calories. 100 calories for excitation. Say, say, whenever a bond is formed, energy is released. Can you tell me why? When a bond is formed, look here. Here, the nucleus, only one nucleus is attracting the electron in an atom. Here is an atom, only one nucleus is attracting. This is the electron, orbit of the electron. One nucleus attracting the electron. Suppose, another nucleus also happens to come close to this and this is attracted by another nucleus also. Now, what is happening? Two nuclei are attracting, 
the electron comes closer to the nucleus, comes closer. So what happens when the electron comes closer to the nucleus energy is released? When, when the electron comes close to, to take the electron away, you have to give energy. To take the electron from first orbit to second orbit to third orbit, you have to give energy. But when the electron comes close, it definitely loses energy. Therefore, during bond formation, energy is released. So, the energy released in the bond formation of helium and chlorine is not very high. Say, it is only 10 calories per 10 calories. What is that you have achieved? For exciting the electrons, 100 calories have been spent. And when the bond is formed, 20 calories have been released. So, there is a loss of 80. You have spent 100 rupees and uh, you are getting only 20. No fool does it. Therefore, the energy involved has to be compensated in a process. The energy required must be produced elsewhere. Therefore, here, when is excitation possible is very clear. The energy required for excitation, if it is compensated during bond formation. So, it is rather easy to excite the electron here. Phosphorus chlorine is bond is formed. When a bond is formed between phosphorus and chlorine, okay, some energy is released. Now, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, and there are so many zeros, 3D0, 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 3D0. So, phosphorus in its excited state can form 5 bonds as in the case of PCL5. You know each chlorine uh, forms 1 bond with the central atom, 5, five chlorines, 5 bonds. Now, what else phosphorus can do? Phosphorus we have already seen can form 3 bonds, 4 bonds, 5 bonds. And how can it form more bonds? How can it form more bonds? That is, look here. It has got so many vacant orbitals. Phosphorus got a lot of empty space. Now, if somebody offers a pair of electrons, pair of electrons, phosphorus takes and forms six bonds as in the case of PCL6 minus. PCL6 minus. Now, you may get a doubt. Sir, there are more vacant orbitals. Why don't you go on accepting PCL7? 2 minus. Here, who are involved? Chlorine, 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 chlorine. This is Cl minus. So, one more Cl minus, one more bond, another Cl minus, another bond like that. Why can't you form PCl 9, 4 minus? So, after PCl 6 minus, you do not see any further accepting on the part of phosphorus. So, the question is why not more than 6? In most cases, the maximum covalency is 6. Most cases, the rare examples being uh, the halogens, chlorine, bromine, iodine and xenon. Their maximum covalency is 7. Xenon, the maximum covalency is even 8. Xenon can form even 8 bonds. In the case of XeO4, xenon tetroxide, Xe double bond O, double bond O. So, xenon in fact forms 8 bonds. Okay. So, why are they forming 8 bonds and uh, halogens forming 7 bonds, all others maximum 6. In their case, all those electrons belong to themselves. The electrons participating in xenon are the electrons of xenon himself. And uh, IF7, the 7 electrons used for sharing belongs to iodine. Therefore, here you are borrowing, you are actually accepting pairs from someone. So, why not more than 6? The answer is, why even 6? If you ask me, why not more than 6? I am asking you, why even 6? PCL5, if you look at it, 5 plus 5, it already has got 10 electrons in its outermost shell. 10 valence electrons, 5 belonging to phosphorus, uh, 1 each from 5 chlorines, 10 electrons. So, you have 10 electrons, phosphorus, PCL5, 10 electrons are there and uh, even after you have 10 electrons, you are still accepting it, uh, it, ha it has to be explained because if you are short of electrons as in the case of boron trifluoride, 
boron trifluoride 3 plus 3 6 okay it is less than 8 boron trifluoride has less than 8 and such species are called electron deficient species electron deficient boron hasn't got the octet but it has no, it had no alternative therefore it formed bf3 so if a, a boron trifluoride accepts a pair of electrons it is understandable okay you will say boron uh, has a shortage of electrons therefore he is taking from others but when you look at pcl5 it is an electron surplus it has got 10 electrons but why is it still accepting the answer lies in this 6 will give it octahedral geometry and trigonal bipyramidal between trigonal bipyramidal and octahedral geometries octahedral is more comfortable more stable because trigonal bipyramidal it is a triangular base triangular base it is some kind of overcrowding therefore in many compounds you see after octahedral after forming six bonds they stop accepting any more therefore why not more than six the answer is why even six even six is to get that octahedral geometry so maximum covalency of most of the elements is six now let us conclude uh, with the chlorine 3s2 3px2 3py2 3pz1 it has got three pairs and one unpaired electron how many bonds can chlorine form it can form one bond in its ground state suppose 3s2 3px2 3py1 3pz1 3d1 what is this this is excited this pair is broken this pair is excited now you have got three unpaired electrons it can form three bonds so one bond as in the case of hcl three bonds as in the case of clo2 minus how to draw the structure of clo2 minus look here clo2 minus chlorine is forming three bonds how can chlorine form three bonds if this is called first excited state in its first excited state that is after breaking one pair second excited state break one more pair so excite these electrons also you have so many d's 3s2 3px1 3py1 3pz1 3d1 3d1 now you have five unpaired electrons clo3 minus one more oxygen clo3 minus clo3 minus so as you go on forming bonds now third excited state one more excited state 3s2 to 3s1 3px1 3py1 3pz1 3d1 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 so seven bonds also clo4 minus clo4 minus clo minus one bond look at this clo minus clo2 minus clo3 minus clo4 minus so clo4 minus you indeed have seven so chlorine can form seven bonds because it is not borrowing electrons from anyone it is using its own electrons if you use your own electrons okay you can form any number of bonds so xenon that way has four pairs after breaking all the four pairs it will be able to form eight bonds xenon forms two bonds xcf2 four bonds xcf4 six bonds F xcf6 xco4 eight even eight bonds two four six eight so xenon shows all these valencies a uh, valency of two of four six eight so conclusion maximum covalency of all elements beryllium boron aluminium gallium indium carbon silicon germanium stannum nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium 
फ्लोरिन क्लोरिन ब्रोमिन आयोडिन एंड एक्जेनॉन सो बेरिलियम टू नाइट्रोजन सेकेंड पीरियड एलिमेंट्स मैक्सिमम कोवलेंसी फोर हाउ कैन बेरिलियम फॉर्म फोर बॉन्ड्स टू बाई शेयरिंग टू बाई एक्सेप्टिंग हाउ कैन बोरॉन फॉर्म फोर बॉन्ड्स थ्री बाई शेयरिंग वन बाई एक्सेप्टिंग बिकॉज इट बिलोंग्स टू थर्ड ग्रुप हाउ कैन कार्बन फॉर्म फोर बॉन्ड्स using its own electron ch4 i'll supply examples to each and from aluminum to tellurium look at a large chunk of them have a maximum covalency of 6 in fact 4 into 3 12 elements have a maximum covalency of 6 chlorine bromine iodine they have a maximum covalency of 7 xenon 8 oxygen 3 fluorine okay you can say 2 if you want you can say maximum covalency of fluorine is 2 how by sharing one by donating one fluorine you can say 2 now let me supply with examples be f4 2 minus what does this tell you 2 minus means 2 f minus 2 donors there are two donors means beryllium is forming only two bonds on its own two own two donation boron bf4 minus so three bonds on its own third group it can form three bonds on its own one by borrowing bf4 minus ch4 it has four electrons it need not borrow anything it can form four bonds straight away nh4 plus for nitrogen it has to form four bonds the only way it can form bonds is it has a pair of electrons then that has to be donated and h3o plus h3o plus oxygen maximum 3 and in the case of aluminum it is al f6 3 minus aluminum forming six bonds how you look at the three minus what does the minus tell you what is the role of a minus in a group towards the beginning of the chapter i told you minus donates so there are three minuses Three donors, so three are donating, three are uh, sharing. Silicon, SiF six. How can a fourth group element form six bonds? Fourth group element means which has four electrons. You have to understand my question. How can a fourth group element form six bonds? Means I am indirectly asking you, how can a fellow who has got only four electrons form six bonds? He accepts two pairs. 2 minus so SiF6 2 minus okay PCl6 minus fifth group forming six bonds means one pair has been accepted from others sulfur SF6 chlorine ClO4 minus bromine BrO4 minus iodine IF7 xenon XeO4 these are the examples of maximum covalency of how, how you can imitate All others, G A F six G like this. You can that can be continued. Maximum covalence. Look here. Bismuth. Six S two six P X one six P Y one six P Z one. All right. What can bismuth do theoretically? It has. Three unpaired electrons, it can share, and in its excited state, suppose the electrons are excited, six s electrons, six s one, six p x one, six p y one, six p z one, six d one. Bismuth can form five bonds also. I repeat, can form. Bismuth can form five bonds also. if necessary but the thing is bismuth is not willing to form five bonds i tell you why wait a minute 6s2 6px1 6py1 6pz1 suppose if these pair of electrons is excited 6s1 6px1 6d1 so 
Bismuth in its ground state can form BiCl3, forming three bonds with chlorine BiCl3 and BiCl3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, BiCl5. 5 bonds, BiCl5. It can form 3 bonds by sharing and it can also form 5 bonds by sharing. But, but bismuth is not willing to form 5 bonds. It is not willing. Why? I tell you a little later. But as of now, you just take this statement. Any question on any question on thallium, lead, bismuth, polonium. Only these four elements. Only these four elements I repeat. Thallium, lead, bismuth, polonium. You start thinking in terms of inert pair effect. Think in terms of inert pair effect. What is that inert pair effect? Let me tell you. Inert pair effect. Preferring, preferring lower oxidation states and fewer number of bonds. Preferring lower oxidation states and fewer number of bonds is called inert pair effect. Preferring. It does not mean that they cannot form 5 bonds. Bismuth can form 5 bonds, but it does not prefer to form 5 bonds because, okay, let us see why. Preferring lower oxidation states and fewer number of bonds. So, between PbCl2 and PbCl4, lead prefers PbCl2. Between Bi3 plus and Bi5 plus, the lower oxidation state is preferred by bismuth. Thallium, lead, bismuth, polonium, they all prefer lower oxidation states and fewer number of bonds. The reason is, I will give you the actual reason later or I think I have already given the actual reason. The, for any happening or non-happening in chemistry, there is only one reason. The energy involved must be compensated. For anything to happen, if this takes place, that happens, otherwise it wouldn't happen. It is only concern of energy only. Look here for instance, 6s2, 6px1, 6py1, 6pz1, the energy required to excite the electron, 6s2, 6s2 to 6d. For you to promote the electron, certain energy is involved and that is not compensated in bond formation. BiCl bond is not very strong and uh, BiCl bond is not very strong and not a lot of energy is released. Therefore, bismuth does not show any willingness to form and this reluctance of a pair of electrons, reluctance, reluctance of a pair of electrons to get separated and participate in bonding get separated and participate in bonding, the unwillingness, the reluctance of a pair of electrons to get separated and participate in bonding. This pair is not willing to get separated, not willing to get separated in the sense, it involves a lot of energy. The energy, lot, lot in the sense, I never mean lot, only relatively. The energy required is more and the energy released is less. So, what happens when more bonds are formed, energy is released. So, while, while all other elements, while all other elements want to form as many bonds as possible, for example, phosphorus, will you form 3 bonds or 5 bonds? Phosphorus says I form, I want to form 5 bonds. Phosphorus prefers more and more bonds. The reason being, in small atoms, they, they are afraid of the lone pairs. The lone pair, bond pair repulsions are high. Therefore, the pair has to be separated, the pair will be separated. But in a big atom, BiCl5, big atom, the lone pair can't create much impact on the bond pairs because it is a very big atom, bismuth is very big, the lone pair can't show. 
So they, they, are, they are not to be avoided. I said loan pairs have to be avoided. But here, now, so thallium lent bismuth polonium, they prefer to form fewer bonds and bismuth Bi is between BiCl3 and BiCl5, BiCl3. And look here, PbO2 is a good oxidizing agent. You hear this statement, why? PbO2 is a good oxidizing agent. You go back to the definition we gave in periodic properties. What is a reducing agent? One who gives electrons. What is an oxidizing agent? Opposites are opposite. Okay. What is a reducing agent? Reducing agent. One who? One who gives electrons. Okay. So what is an oxidizing agent? One who takes electrons. What is the indirect meaning of this? PbO2 is a good oxidizing agent. Means PbO2 wants to take electrons. Why? In PbO2, lead is in plus 4 oxidation state. And in the plus 4 oxidation state, lead prefers plus 2. Why? Inert pair effect. That's all. Pl plus 2 of lead is preferred to plus 4 of lead 2. So, the consequence, PbO2 is a good oxidizing agent. Means, PbO2 wants to take electrons so that its oxidation state decreases from plus 4 to plus 2. By taking electrons, what happens? Plus 4 minus minus, it becomes plus 2 plus 4 minus 1 electron means minus 1 plus 4 minus 1 minus 1 net plus 2 so like that so where can you see this inert pair of it? while all other elements they want to go to high oxidation state as many bonds as possible only these four are satisfied with the minimum number of bonds minimum number of bonds lead says okay but no one exhibits inert pair effect in front of fluorine. No one exhibits inert pair effect in front of means no inert pair effect. So, which is better BIF3 or BIF5? BIF, BIF5. So, this itself proves that the cost involved is compensated. The pair of electrons is broken, some energy is required and when fluorine forms bond, the bond is stronger. So, the BIF bond and the BICL bond, what is the essential difference? Small atoms form stronger bonds. BIF bond is stronger than BICL bond. Therefore, as a result, more energy is released. BIF bond, BICL bond, more energy is released in this process. Okay, that's it. Small atoms form stronger bonds. Therefore, what is the actual reason? Despite whatever we say, it is the energy that matters finally. Okay, the energy required for ini initially, the energy required initially should be constant, con 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 okay, compensated eventually. That has to be compensated eventually. That is the essence of anything. Cost price should be less than selling price. Cost price less than selling price. The cost involved must be compensated. That is the economics of chemistry. Now, shapes of molecules. Shapes. We usually have a tendency to invoke the idea of hybridization while discussing shape. L frequently, I get this reply from students. Methane. What is the average of methane? They say, no, no. What is the shape of methane? They say, tetrahedral. When I ask them why, they say it is sp3 hybridized. So, you are indirectly relating hybridization and shape. And I warn you, hybridization and shape are mutually exclusive. They have nothing in common. Because ammonia hybridization sp3 but shape is pyramidal shape is pyramidal h2o hybridization again is sp3 but the shape is v shape so hybridization has not got anything to do with shape 
don't confuse the ideas now shape depends on what the shape of a molecule depends on number of bond pairs guest atoms guest atoms surrounding atoms terminal atoms terminal atoms number of bond pairs and number of lone pairs that's all it depends on the number of bond pairs and the number of lone pairs so most importantly before we try to find shape you should find the number of lone pairs how to find what do you mean by number of lone pairs <laughs> number of unused electrons in bonding how many electrons are not being used look here number of valence electrons of the central atom of course we are always interested in the central atom only number of valence electrons of the central atom minus number of electrons used in bonding used in bonding by 2 it means how many you have how many you have spent and how many pairs are remaining as simple as that number of valence electrons how many you have and number of electrons used in bonding how many have used in bonding for example let me find out the lone pairs in SNCl2 SNCl2 what about this 4 minus 2 by 2 Stannum belongs to fourth group from the beginning of this topic I have been warning you to know which element belongs to which group the moment I say stannum if you fourth group comes to your mind SNCl to 4 2 so there is a lone pair 4 minus 2 by 2 1 lone pair and H3 so you take a host of molecules and practice all these on this don't do hundreds of questions instead of doing hundreds of questions I will give you a host of molecules NH3, BF3, CO2, SNCl2, SICl4, SNCl2 like this you take so many molecules SO3, XeO4, XeO3, XeF2 so some 60 molecules are there in our syllabus what you should do is find their hybridization find the hybridization of all find the shape of all of them find the number of lone pairs in all of them find the number of sigma bonds in all of them so, so roughly 60 molecules into 10 questions 600 questions will be covered on a sheet of paper ok for example find out everything about SO3 everything you know SO3 1 sulfur 3 oxygens like this so what is it you know 1 sulfur 3 sigma bonds 3 pi bonds then oxidation state of sulfur is equal to plus 6 so instead of answering questions like oxidation state of sulfur in SO3 is oxidation state of boron in BF3 is oxidation state of instead of answering individual questions you find the hybridization of 40 50 molecules uh, shape of the same 40 50 molecule hybridization shape number of lone pairs all things on the same molecule like this then what about SO3 shape planar trigonal planar and hybridization 6 minus 0 by 2 what is that 3 sp2 number of lone pairs no 3 bond pair 0 lone pair like this any number of questions can be answered on the same so NH3 find the lone pairs in NH3 nitrogen belongs to fifth group 5 minus 3 by 2 there is a lone pair like that how about SO2 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 6 minus 4 by 2 what is this 6 sulfur you know belongs to the sixth group minus 4 by 2 6 minus 4 by 2 one lone pair SO2 like this so the shape of a molecule depends on the number of number of bond pairs you may be mistaken 
it is not number of bonds i am not talking it is number of bond bonded atoms number of bond pair means number of atoms that are coming to form bonds whether they form one bond or two bond it is the number of guest atoms number of bond pairs number of lone pairs look here 2 0 what do you mean by 2 0 two bond pairs zero lone pairs the shape is linear 2 0 linear 2 1 bent or angular 2 2 v shape 2 3 is also linear unexpectedly linear so many lone pairs are there but still linear 2 3 what do you mean by 2 3 Two bond pairs, three lone pairs. Now, three zero. Trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. Three one. Pyramidal. Three two is a T shape. Four zero. Four zero is tetrahedral. Four one C saw or distorted tetrahedral. Distorted tetrahedral C saw. Four two square planar. Five zero trigonal bipyramidal. Y one square pyramidal square pyramidal six zero octahedral six one distorted octahedral distorted octahedral or capped octahedral capped octahedral 70 pentagonal bipyramidal pentagonal bipyramidal now so when i ask you the shape don't tell me uh, the actual shape you just mention you just mention 2021 like that essential 2 i am even marking the lone pairs You need not even find lone pairs now. I have already marked the lone pairs. You just tell me it's two one, two one. I will mark the lone pairs ahead of the formula itself. Look here. Means by the time I write the formula, you must be able to say two one because you already seen the one. You have seen the one ahead of two, two one. So what is the shape of SO two? Two one. So if you know the lone pair, I have marked the lone pairs here. So what is it you have to learn? You should be able to mark the lone pairs yourself. Two one, F, B F three. There is no lone pair. Three zero, three zero trigonal planar. You need not tell me trigonal planar because if you say three zero, I understand as much. I understand. So you just tell me the coordinates. C H four. There is no lone pair here. Four zero, because I am marking the lone pairs. If any, if there is a lone pair, I am marking you. So you need not trouble yourself. The next part I will ask you to mark the lone pairs. Four zero tetrahedral. What is it you are seeing ahead of the number? One lone pair. Four one. Four bond pairs. One lone pair. Four bond pair. One lone pair. C is our distorted tetrahedral. So what is the conclusion? The shape of a molecule depends on the number of lone pairs and the number of bond pairs. And uh, Listen. You just find out the lone pairs this time yourself. X C F two, X C F two, X C F two. How to find out? X minus two by two. Eight minus two by two is three. One two three. X eight minus two by two. X C F two. Okay. Two bond pairs. Three lone pairs. Two bond pairs. Three lone pairs. <laughs> Linear. 
despite the presence of lone pairs it acquires a linear shape because the lone pairs cannot be avoided there are too many lone pairs even if the atoms try okay that's they will be taking a linear shape and the lone pairs are in the equatorial position the lone pairs are in one plane and bond pairs are above below the plane like that you can take your own example and you can find yourself xe o3 xe o3 xe o3 8 minus 6 by 2 one lone pair xe o2 f2 the shape of xe o2 f2 question given in 2012 IIT 2012 this question is given the shape of xe o2 f2 how to find out first the lone pairs first things first 8 minus 4 what is this 4 4 electrons are used by oxygen 8 minus 4 minus 2 by 2 8 minus 4 minus 2 by 2 there is one lone pair total number of guests how many two oxygens two fluorines so it is 4 1 4 bond pairs one lone pair xe o2 f2 this is called distorted tetrahedral or c sa c sa it is something like this a v, a v shape on a v you draw a line c sa xe o2 don't worry whether oxygens are in this plane oxygens are at this position or oxygens at this position that is not very important Okay, that, that is secondary discussion. That is all secondary discussion. You need not waste time on it. Enough if you know seesaw. Where exactly on the seesaw the atoms are arranged? Now, SOCl2. Find the lone pairs and bond pairs. 6 minus 2 minus 2 by 2. 6. What is this 6? Six? 6 electrons of sulfur, 2 of oxygen. 2 of chlorine 6 minus 2 minus 2 by 2 so there is still one lone pair sulfur so how will you draw the structure we have already learned drawing the structures SOCl2 1 sulfur why is it pyramidal 3 bond pairs 1 lone pair like ammonia so ammonia SOCl2 or SOF2 for that matter SOF2 or OSF2 ammonia XeO3 all these are isostructural what do you mean by isostructural same shape same shape that is same number of bond pairs and lone pairs same number of bond pairs and lone pairs.